guys, what's going on? So today we are coming at you with another boat tip video. Now in today's video, we're gonna be adding some upgrades to our boat, including a new anchor, anchor chain, anchor line, as well as teaching you how to use an anchor ball to retrieve your anchor, which is going to make your life a lot easier. We're going to switch out our old dock lines for some new ones and do a quick overview about how we tie our boat up at the dock, as well as show you some things that you need as a boat owner, every boat owner needs these kind of things, as well as a few of my number one safety items that I think you need to have on a boat. Now today's video is sponsored by Sea Choice Products. Everything you see here and that we will be talking about today is a product by Sea Choice. They have locations all around the US where you can find their products. I will have a link in the description where you can find a list of dealers near you. Sea Choice offers a full range of quality marine products, making it a one-stop shop for the daily boat user. They carry basically everything you can need for your boat, such as anchors, boat wash, electrical equipment, parts for your trailers, nuts, bolts, lighting equipment, anything you can think of. Boating can be an expensive hobby, and when you need something, it usually isn't cheap. However, with the volume of sales Sea Choice has, they are able to manufacture in large quantities to be a low cost price leader. So the first thing we're going to do today is put our new anchor, chain, and rope into the boat. So let's go do that. Now behind me is my family's 247 Edgewater. We've had the boat now for like six years and we've learned what works for us for anchoring. We've gone through a couple different kinds of anchors. We've tried a Danforth, we tried one other style, and this is a plow anchor. Plow anchor is what we have found that works best for our style of fishing that we do. And this is a 14 pound plow anchor. We're gonna put on 15 feet of 516's chain, as well as this is 600 feet of half inch double braid nylon anchor line. Now, over the six years, we found what works for us. What we're gonna use for our boat is not gonna be the same thing that's gonna work for your boat. There's lots of different sciences that go into how much anchor chain you need, how much line you need, based on how deep you're anchoring, based on the size of your boat. A lot of different factors go into it, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what you need for your boat. So if you're trying to figure out what kind of anchor, chain, and line that you need for your boat, I definitely recommend doing some research. I recommend you trying to figure out what your plans are with using your boat. Where you're gonna be fishing, how deep you're gonna be fishing. Maybe you're a sandbar person. You're definitely not gonna need 600 feet of anchor line if you're never gonna go out and deep sea fish and anchor in 200 feet of water. Based on the size of your boat you need, you're probably gonna need a smaller or bigger anchor than us. Maybe you need more than 15 feet of chain. Maybe your anchor locker won't hold that much line. Maybe your boat can't have a ton of chain in the front of it because it's too much weight. I mean, even sailboats only use anchor chain. They don't even have any anchor line. So lots of different things that go into this. So this is just what we're using for what we do, our fishing anchoring needs. Okay, I definitely recommend doing research. There's lots of different articles out there about what is best for your boat, your weight boat, what you're doing depth wise of anchoring, as well as you can even call the company of your boat, let's say you own a Boston Whaler, you can call it Boston Whaler, and I'm sure they would set you up with the best thing. Enough of that. So, 600 feet of anchor line, you might think that's crazy, some people might think that's not enough. What we did was we laid out our anchor line in 100 foot increments, and then made little marks. So this is the end of the rope, this would be your 600 foot mark, this is 500 feet here, another 100 feet down, Here's four marks for 400 feet, another 100 feet down, here's three marks for 300 feet, 200 feet, 100 feet. So as you're letting out your anchor line, you reach the 100 mark, you know, okay, just so you kind of have a peace of mind and know how much line you have out, you get to the second mark, okay, there's 200 feet of anchor line out. Get to the third mark, there's 300 feet of anchor line out. You get to the fifth mark, there's 500 feet of anchor line out, so you know you don't have that much left. So that's kind of a good little, tip that you can do so you can kind of just have an idea of how much anchor line you're using. If your boat has a windlass, it probably has something that tells you how much anchor line you have out, so that's much easier. Our boat doesn't have a windlass, so we're throwing this all out and bringing it all back in. All right, so we put all 600 feet of anchor line into our anchor locker. We have our plow anchor here, fits nice and perfect. We got our 15 feet of anchor chain. Now we have a half We have a half inch 
stainless steel rope thimble on the end of the rope. I actually watched a lot of videos trying to figure out how to do this on my own. And with the double braided line, it looked extremely complicated. So we actually got this done somewhere local for, I think it was $24. It was probably the best $24 I ever spent. I'll have that place linked in the description as well because literally just dropped off the line and they put the thimble on for me. Highly recommend a stainless steel thimble. I'll show you guys our old one. We didn't have a stainless steel one and it almost rusted out completely. This keeps your line from getting chafed. You could have it without the stainless steel thimble, but it really helps to keep your rope intact and not get chafed. So here is also a stainless steel shackle between the chain and your anchor line. I'm gonna tighten this up with vice grips. Just gonna tighten that up. So now that's good. Put the rest of this through. So why do you have so much anchor chain? So we used to have only five feet of anchor chain. The more anchor chain you have, the heavier it makes your anchor. So your boat is floating here. Here's your anchor line to your anchor. The more anchor chain you have, the heavier and the flatter your anchor line is gonna lay. So if you don't have a lot of chain, you're gonna have a more straight line like this and it's gonna be pulling up on your anchor. The more anchor chain you have, it's gonna be laying flatter and pulling more horizontally on your anchor so you're not just like pulling your anchor across the sand. The 15 feet of chain versus six foot of chain, you're going to hold better and your anchor's gonna set a lot easier. Again, maybe you need 30 feet of anchor chain, maybe you only need five feet of anchor chain. Maybe you think that 15 feet of chain is not enough for us, but that's what works for us. You probably need something different, I can almost guarantee it. All right, so we're gonna show you how to use the anchor ball at the end of the video. Now we're moving on to dock lines. All right guys, so now it is time to change our old dock lines for nice new ones. This is my dad, Brian. You guys have seen him in a lot of videos before and he's gonna show you guys how we tie up our boat. So go ahead. Well, Brooke got me some nice green lines. If you can't tell, just look at my house and you can tell I love green. Everything here is green. So Brooke was getting me new lines. She goes, what color lines you want? I'm like, green. We've had this boat six years, but we've never had new lines. They were just hand-me-down lines. We got two black lines, two red lines. Now we're gonna deck our boat out with new lines. So I'm gonna retie this, and um, I only use half the cleat on this one. On your midship. On the midship. I like a nice, tight spring line. I like to wrap it around once so it's pulling on on the rope and not my knot and then cleat it once cleat it again and then i just use up a little excess now this is how we tie our boat up at our personal dock we don't dock our boat anywhere else so every single time we use the boat we bring it right back to the same spot use the exact same four lines every single time and just keep tying up the boat so we never move any of the lines if you live somewhere or if you keep your boat somewhere where keep your boat there constantly, you should be leaving your lines on your dock. You can go out, come right back, and your lines are already set up for you. Our old and crusty lines. Okay, I'm gonna put my second spring line on. Just using half the cleat like that. Instead of going directly to a cleat that can pull the cleat out of the concrete, I always like to go around the piling nice and tight, then go around my cleat once, sometimes twice, cinch it tight, and then cleat it. And I'm going to do the bow line. Now we tie these we tie these lines like Brooke said to the dock one time and that's it. We just untie our boat and leave the dock lines the way they are. It makes life a lot easier to leave the dock lines on the dock. And then if you're going someplace where you think you might need lines, maybe you should invest in a couple more lines so that you have 
a couple more lines that you can leave on the boat, and then also your lines that you can leave on the dock. Same thing with this one. I'm not gonna tie it to this cleat because it could pull the cleat out of the concrete. I'm gonna go to the back side of the piling. Let's go around the cleat twice and then cleat it. We have a full dedicated YouTube video about how to tie your boat up at the dock. So if you guys are interested in that video, I will have that video linked down in the description if you want a more detailed explanation of how we tie the boat up. Now finally, after six years, I got all matching lines tying up my boat. Look how nice that looks. Moving on to as a boat owner, something you're going to have to buy definitely more than once is boat wash. Not only boat wash, but you also need brushes. So we like a nice hard deck brush that we use on basically the entire boat except for on the stainless steel, which we like a wash mitt, something soft to wash the stainless steel with, as well as I wash the entire console, the steering wheel, all the electronics and all that stuff with nice something nice and soft, not a hard bristle brush. So it's good to have one of these as well as a deck brush. I always make Victor do the hard part. <laughs> I do the easy part of all, I'm talking all the stainless steel and everything, the cushions, something nice and soft, all the stainless steel of the T-top, that's my job. Victor gets the deck brush job. Next thing is you always want a sponge. Um, regardless of how hard you try to keep a hatch on a boat clean from water, you can put as much weather stripping as you want, but somehow water always ends up finding its way in there. As you can see, we haven't used the boat <laughs> in a couple weeks yet. There's water in that hatch. So get yourself a nice sponge and that's the best way to clean out your hatches. Drain out the water, get yourself a bucket. Always gotta have a sponge. Now before we take the boat out and show you how the anchor ball works, I wanna talk about one more thing that as a boat owner you might overlook but could very well save your life in a bad situation. So two things that I find are very important on your boat to have is one, an air horn. A lot of boats don't have horns. Our boat does not have a horn. So let's say a boat's coming at us really fast. They don't look like they're paying attention have this in a place that's very easy to get to. Take it out, use it. You can make other boaters aware. Maybe they're not paying attention. Another thing that we have this on our boat for is when we're diving. A rule that we give everyone is whoever is on the boat, because we usually always have someone on the boat. If something's happened and I need the attention of all the divers at one time, if you hear this, regardless of where you are, you need to take your head out of the water and look at me. That could be because a boat's coming at us or I don't know, something bad could be happening. So this can be very useful. Might not be something you think about. It's not something the Coast Guard makes you have on your boat, but I think it's something that is very useful. Next thing on the list is a first aid kit. It might seem like something like, duh, of course you want a first aid kit on the boat, but I'll be honest, we didn't have a good first aid kit on the boat until right now. That's something that I had wanted on the boat for a really long time. You know, maybe you don't think you have enough space for it. I don't care how much space you have on the boat, you need a good first aid kit on your boat. So definitely invest in a first aid kit. Again, everything you guys have seen in the video has been AC Choice product. I will write in the description every item that I've talked about today, as well as a link where you can find a dealer, a location near you that carries Sea Choice products. All right guys, so I wanted to show you the anchor ball use on a nice calm flat day put up the drone so you can see it easily, but we got a pretty choppy day out here, but we're still gonna put the drone up for you. So this is what I got. I got a 15 inch anchor ball. This is a Sea Choice anchor ball. I have a little bit of rope to a clip to the anchor ring. Now the point of this, whoa. <laughs> the point of this is this is going to, this is supposed to get stuck on your anchor. So we're gonna clip this to the anchor line. So the anchor line is gonna go through here like this and we're gonna put the boat in here and make a big circle around our anchor line. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna slide down the anchor line through the chain and then hook onto the anchor and then float it up. So the point here is you need an anchor ball big enough to support the weight of your anchor as well as your chain. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna have your anchor floating on the surface so that you can easily then pull your line in without having to pull all the weight of the anchor. So this is if you do not have a windlass. A windlass basically does this for you. So this isn't if you have a windlass, this is if you are manually pulling in 
the anchor by yourself. This helps get your anchor unstuck, makes life a lot easier, so we're going to show you how to do it. Okay, it's on. Okay, let it go. Okay, that was a little hard to see, I know, but it's really rough, so <laughs> not much else I can do for you. But basically, anytime you anchor, you can already have your anchor ball out there, so when you're ready to go, you just start driving. But this is what we got. The anchor ball's right there. So now, when I drive the boat, I'm going to be making a big circle around the line. If I were to drive just straight out my anchor line, you have the chance of running over it with a prop. So you want to be very mindful of where your anchor line is so you're not running it over. So here we go. We're heading towards the anchor, but a big circle. So here's my anchor, here's all my anchor scope, here's my boat. I'm doing a big circle like this, getting way in front of the anchor ball so that it pulls it up. The anchor ball is going to go down the line to the anchor, float it up, and then we'll be able to pull in the line. One more thing, you need a lot of space to do this. Think about the fact that you're anchoring in however deep, 70 feet of water, you have however much scope out. So you're gonna need that much area to be able to do this. So you're not gonna do this where there's a bunch of boats anchored or you know, close to an inlet where there's a bunch of boats running around. You need a big space so you have enough room to get to do this properly. Scratch the drone, it's too windy and too rough to try to catch it after we fly it. So no drone for you, but Victor's gonna try to show you and film it as we're doing it. So I'm gonna put the boat into gear and make a big circle. Now you also need enough speed so that the anchor ball can actually make it to your anchor. and pull my anchor line in as I'm drifting back towards the anchor ball. So now there's no weight on this rope because that, that ball is holding my anchor. So now I can just pull this in nice and easy as I'm drifting back towards it with the tide, with the wind, with the current. on the anchor that's exactly what's supposed to happen and you saw I mean I pulled the anchor in in less than a minute and you know how we marked the um, anchor rope at some point here is the hundred foot mark so we had probably 150 feet of anchor rope out worked perfectly worked perfect much easier than trying to pull in all that rope and all that chain and all that anchor and try to get it unstuck on your own. Super easy. If you don't like anchoring because you think it's hard, this is something that you should definitely check out doing for your boat. Makes life a lot easier. So let's pull this in and then get the anchor ball off. Come 
got it? Literally as easy as that. I'm usually the one who pulls up the anchor and I can tell you right now this is gonna be a game changer. Now time for the fun part of putting all the anchor rope back into the anchor locker. Super, super simple thing to do. Again, do some research on how much rope you should have, how much chain you should have, your size anchor, and your anchor ball needs to be big enough to be able to hold the weight of your chain as well as your anchor. Make sure the ring is wide enough and big enough to go past the anchor towards any part of your anchoring system. Now the anchor ball is a C-Choice anchor ball, but the ring and the clip are not. We actually had those for years, but the anchor ball is a C-Choice anchor ball. But any place that probably sells C-Choice probably has those anchor rings as well because this is a popular item. So wherever you're going to get your anchor ball, look around for the anchor ring. I highly suggest it. It makes life a lot easier if you don't have a windlass on your boat. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions for me, comment down below. I'll try to answer them. If you have any tips for me on anything that you saw today, you can comment that down below as well. And everything that I use today, I will have in the description of this video, as well as the link to the Seed Choice website where you can find a dealer near you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Is every plane leaving the airport today? <laughs> what the heck? It's gonna be loud with the plane. It's nice. Hold on, let me put this plane.